another episode of Modern Walk. Thank you for joining me today. So today I thought I'd do um, another video on my beginner's guide series. Just because I think the first one did rather well and I think it just shows that there's definitely a lot of people who are trying to understand the game, figure it out. And yeah, some of the obscure rules I want to cover today. So let's get into it. Uh, comment down below, please subscribe, please share, please like and let's get into it. So I've covered, I've covered some of the basic like setups and the player position stuff. But I want to get into some of the other rules, like especially when you're watching the game, trying to figure out what teams are going for. So obviously uh, I was going to start off with... Um, Kicking. Obviously, uh, when you kick, you'll notice that teams can kick from behind the 22 or past the 22. If they kick in front behind the 22, so uh, the player can kick directly out. That will mean that the ball, the, the, the lineup will occur, which obviously the player is trying to get the ball back into the field, um, will occur where the ball left the field. That's only inside the 22. Past the 22, if you're the attacking team beyond the 22, uh, the ball must bounce or touch, well, yeah, bounce effectively and then go out uh, before it's considered. Um, the, 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 before it'll go there, otherwise it's considered directly out and the ball will go back to where it was kicked. So obviously that's a big issue for teams if you're trying to gain position through that kick. Um, so that's, that's essential, that a lot of people don't understand. Obviously also as the defending team, if you kick a ball into field and uh, the uh, defending team catches it inside their 22, cleanly catches it, they can also call a mark. That effectively will then lead to a 22 dropout, um, where, the play, where the where play will continue through that. Uh, but that's obviously to make to obviously protect the player and to ensure that you don't aim directly just into the 22 of a team that can actually cost you position and also uh, spacing. I wanted to get to some of the like the penalties. Obviously, you, you'll see in the scrums that there's two types. A lot of uh, commonly your short arm uh, or your uh, straight arm penalties. The difference being effectively if the if it's just a short a small infringement, you'll get a short arm. Uh, usually from maybe slightly throwing in the ball size skew or just engaging too early um, too often and that normally leads to a short, short arm penalty. You get your long arm penalties if the player, uh, this is a very debated issue in the rugby, but effectively it normally should be that the player who collapses or goes down first or doesn't bind correctly on either side of the scrum uh, can cause that. Obviously also if the scrum is turned more than uh, 180 also can cause a penalty for the opposing team. So that's a tough one, unfortunately that's a hard one, even rugby fanatics don't always call the right thing there and um, it's pretty much your team should have gotten the penalty as I've seen many times in many teams. Um, yeah, On the ruck side you'll notice obviously players trying to get over the ball and then the ref shouting leave it. That's usually a case of the, ta the tackling player can try and steal the ball but only after they've released him, gotten to their feet and then given space and then they can go for the ball. Obviously this usually, when the attacking, when the actual person doing the tackle steals the ball is rare unless it's a breakaway run where there's not a lot of other players to clean him out. That's when it often happens. But you'll see much more commonly, especially your forward packs will play in pods, where the one will tackle the guy in the, um, around the feet, then the other player, because he was never part of the tackle, doesn't have to follow the same rules now. He just has to go down and try and steal the ball. He doesn't have to release, he's already on his feet. So that's a very common strategy by many teams to try and get um, to try and get the ball, and that's obviously where your defending, your attacking team uh, forward pack needs to show they can clean out before this player does. You get a lot of specialists in this field, focus points, especially in your loose forwards, and that's why you'll normally see them running in pods of two or three to try and uh, catch a person off guard here. This is definitely a focus point for many teams. Obviously, on the other side, is you can um, you you cannot enter a ruck from the sides, only from behind. Although. That's gotten a little bit more grey in recent rugby rules, but effectively that's still the case. Um, you also got other other important things uh, when it comes to open play. So when it comes to tackling and that, you can just some tackling rules. You obviously cannot tackle higher than the shoulder. Um, there are some rules about if the player is going is is running down. There is some uh, leniency on that, but effectively you should never tackle above the shoulder. Is the kind of general rule. You cannot tackle without arms. That means with a leading shoulder. You if you only tackle ta tackle the leading shoulder, that's almost almost always directly a yellow card. So a uh, big one. Um, just a shout out to all you Owen Farrell fans. You know what I'm talking about. Just a little bit of a heads up. Uh, then. On the last, on the last bit, you've also got tackling in the air. You cannot play a uh, play in the air. Now that includes playing a player when he's being he's lifted in a lineup. You cannot touch him except you can go for the ball, but you cannot touch the player. So it's essential. Obviously, when I say touch, like try and disrupt the play, and you cannot tackle a player even if you're both running at it. 
the defending player gets the uh, benefit here, so you have to ensure you actually get the ball if you're an attacking player trying to get that ball. So it's a very common strategy teams will use, and you'll see players often jumping just before catching the ball to ensure players don't tackle them immediately and they've got time to place or respond to an attacking move. Very common move. So that, those are some basic new uh, rules. I've just wanted to give you a little bit more advice, some things that you're watching open play to co that confuse a lot of spectators I've noticed. I hope that helps, and if there's any specific rules you want me to cover, please put a comment down below, please share, please subscribe, and yeah, I'd love to do another video on this on some other ones. Unfortunately, rugby's got enough rules that I could probably do a 20 video um, uh, series on this, but yeah, let's see what the focus points are. Thanks, guys. I appreciate time. Cheers.